taking the path less traveled, how to crush it on Instagram, and the process to become an overnight success. Welcome to episode 34 with the creator of the Success Club and the co-founder of Invigorate, Alex Lombard. You are listening to Len Jones Party of Two, where experts and influencers speak honestly and openly about their keys to success. Sponsored by Trueface.ai, where your face is the key. For more information on Trueface, please contact your host at ian at trueface.ai. Now, pay close attention, because you going to learn today. What up, what up, party people? How you living? How we doing? You already know, it is a damn good day to have a damn good day. And you know, a common theme we talk about in this podcast is how to build your brand and begin attracting the ideal customer to you. There's a huge paradigm shift amongst marketers learning this strategy and it's changing the game, which is so exciting because we live in a world where you can literally make a living doing whatever you want if you master the skill of building your brand and attracting the ideal customer or viewers to your program or whatever you're looking to do. And if you're new to the podcast, our mission here is twofold. Educate aspiring entrepreneurs by dissecting the come up stories of incredible humans by extracting the golden nuggets that you can apply now to better your life. And second, to have all my friends in life that are making moves to meet my other friends in life making moves to create one giant community of extraordinary people. One of the keys to building a brand in 2019 is Instagram. I am guilty of Instagram being both my favorite and least favorite social media platform. Favorite in that I love the story feature. I love sharing my day-to-day Jones life and just having good time, good vibes. It's so fun. Least favorite in that I spend way too much time on it. But on a side note, I recently found out that with the iPhone, you can actually set limits to which apps you're using too much and it'll send you an alert. So check that out in your settings. Very cool. On the flip side, our guest today, Alex has mastered Instagram. He built his account at v.success.club to 818,000 followers, as well as his personal account at Vision Wall to 187,000 followers. He is also the co-founder of Invigorate, which takes already successful people offline and displays their brand online through revolutionary technology. In short, the technology works by targeting a person's target audience and doing that on autopilot so that the business is constantly finding new people that are related to that person's ideal customer profile. On top of Alex's long list of accomplishments, he has taken part in some of the most exclusive masterminds with industry leaders. My entire life, people have told me connections are everything, and I truly believe that, and Alex is easily one of the most connected individuals individuals that I know. On this episode, Alex speaks about three things you can do now to upgrade your Instagram brand, the process to become an overnight success, how to embrace the struggle so you can manufacture the epic story, and key lessons learned after building multiple companies. You know I'm all about the good vibes here, and Alex is just a great example of that. It was an absolute joy to be able to pick his brain. Although I had to edit out some sequences due to poor internet, this episode crushed, and I highly recommend you share this with someone that's looking to build their brand on Instagram. You already know, our goal here to spread the love and have you all making moves. Now, without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, what up, party people? We're live again, and we got the absolute magic. We got the man behind the vision wall, behind so many epic ideas, Alex. Alex Lombard, how you doing, man? I'm doing good, bro. Thanks for having me. Dude, you are living the dream. Every time I see you, you are just this human that is just crushing it on all social media fronts. Such a positive person. What did it, you know, how, how did you see yourself two years ago being where you're at right now? Yeah, man. I mean, I have always kind of lived by the philosophy when I got into, you know, well, even before entrepreneurship, I got started in the entrepreneur world like six years ago. Um, But even before that, you know, I've always kind of had this mindset of, I love the phrase life by design, um, because it really is true, you know, and, and, uh, and so, yeah, I mean, I was, I was young, I was excited, you know, to go do things. And I've always just really wanted two main things. And that was just freedom in the financial and the time category. You know, a lot of people fight for those, um, those areas and, in but I really wanted it. Like I actually was like, I'm going to make this happen for my life because life's so short. I want the freedom to be able to do what I want, when I want with whoever I want. But I also want the resources through, you know, making money to be able to actually do do those things fun. You know, it's like it ain't fun going on a Mexico trip when you're broke as a joke. You know, it's a lot more fun when you can afford to do cool things. So 
um, yeah, man, absolutely. It's always kind of been in the head and, uh, it's still, you know, the vision's still growing and progressing every single day. A hundred percent. And you've become a severe influencer in the world of growing credibility, specifically on Instagram and being able to advise seven, eight figure income earners on building their social media brands. Mm -hmm. And it was cool because I was actually talking to uh, Luke yeah. and uh, he was talking about how he had this breakthrough moment where he realized that based on all the work that he's been putting in, that he was now in a position where he had enough knowledge to offer enough value to people from all over doing this thing. And I think that's a major key that people sometimes think, oh, well, I can't mentor that person. I can't coach that person. That person's so much more above me or whatnot. And I, I see you and I see what you're doing in your progress and you're just making moves, man. You, you, <laughs> you learned a skill and you're teaching people how to do it. You're failing fast and you're learning as you go. So like, what did the OG early life look like? Where'd you go to school? Uh, did you do anything with school? Like, can you tell me about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, so let me give you a quick backstory. Um, so I was born in St. Louis, Missouri, <clears throat> excuse me, was, uh, was brought to Michigan when I was in second grade with my family. Um, grew up in Michigan pretty much my entire life until just over a year ago when I moved out here to Scottsdale. But during that time in Michigan, uh, which by the way was the best de decision ever. Um, yeah. But when I was uh, when I grew up in Michigan, man, I uh, you know when I was when I was in school, I was just always the kid that was like looking for a way out. You know, when I was in middle school and high school, I was all about the adventure, the experience, getting in trouble, running around, having fun, super hyper. You know, just that kid. And uh, and I always would like think to myself, I'm like, man. You know, I only got a few years left of this and then I'm a, you know, an adult, I'm in the real world. And I remember just having that feeling always on me, kind of like weighing me down because I was like, I don't know what I want to do. You know, all my other friends are like, oh, I'm going to go pursue this career. And I'm like, man, I, I don't want to sit in an office. I don't want to do what my parents are doing. I don't want to do what any of my friends or parents are doing. You know, anyone in my circle, I'm like, I just don't want to do that, you know, but I didn't really understand business, obviously, at the time thought of, you know, entrepreneur was somebody who owned a gas station or built a, you know, and invented a product. And although those are forms of entrepreneurship, of course, there's a lot more than just that. And so long story short, um, went to college because that's what I was told to do. I uh, went to Eastern Michigan University. I literally went up to the counselor uh, on the day of like signing and was like, hey, you know, I don't really know what I want to do, but I love sports. Do you guys have anything revolving around sports? And she looked at me and she's like, well, actually, we just launched this brand new program called sports management. And I'm like, perfect, sign me up. No idea what it was, got into the program, um, had fun with it. It was cool. We just talked about ESPN every day, but soon realized I was spending a lot of money to talk about ESPN every day. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, man, at, you know, at 21 years old is when I got, you know, introduced to uh, kind of my first entrepreneurship um, you know, Vima for we can throw that out there. You know, obviously you were involved with that too. That's kind of what ignited everything. And that changed the entire course of my life. Cause it really was just the first time that I got introduced to a new way of thinking. Uh, and it made me realize that, you know, Hey, here, here's a way to go and make money. And, and one thing I forgot to say too, is, you know, during that process, like throughout high school and college, you know, I was, I, I kind of made up my mind that I wasn't really going to go down the normal traditional path. Right. So I was kind of forced to do something else. So it's cool that you went down that road and it just kind of opened your mind. I mean, for me, that's what got me involved into my current startup with Trueface. Uh, yeah. For you, that's what led to building this incredible business, helping influencers and all these yeah. things. So, so what, after that whole experience went down, I mean, did you kind of have like a roadblock? Like what did those like, like the year after say you Vima stopped, like where were you at mentally? And what was that first move towards like the next chapter? Yeah, man. So when, when that all happened, um, we actually moved and went to a different company. So I was still completely sold on the industry. Um, and actually I remember being, you know, I was in so deep in a personal development at that point that, you know, I was, I, I remember literally getting myself to be excited because I was like, this is a new chapter. Um, you know, I never, I never made it to any massive ranks or anything. And I actually felt pretty blessed because I was, I was half of a, half a rank away from getting the car. And, uh, and then, you know, when it went down and I was just so grateful that I didn't get the car cause that would have been really bad, you know? <laughs> and so, um, so yeah, we actually ended up moving to a different company in the space. Um, what didn't, wasn't a fit at all. And then after that is when I actually took the first kind of break from the industry and started doing my own thing. Um, I got into just like online marketing, like the basics, you know, like funnel design and landing pages and email marketing and, you know, things like that and finding little affiliate offers that I could go promote and pay, you know, for with paid traffic. And, 
Um, I had a really good friend of mine and a business partner at the time as well, who was, you know, doing that with me. Uh, and so there was a little gap there where I got into that space. And then I actually, uh, got involved with another company that we ended up starting up a travel based uh, business and uh, did that for actually like a year and a half, you know, which was back in the industry. And then after that, man, that's when, um, the, you know, after that, that run, uh, is when we decided to, well, I personally decided to, you know, fully transition and start up my own actual thing. And that's where we launched our company in bigger eight um, the digital marketing agency. So, um, yeah, man, I mean, long, along that journey of kind of in and out of that space, was I was learning, I was growing, I was building connections, you know, in just the digital marketing world. And then it all kind of lined up where, you know, a few years after doing that, and then obviously years and years of experience on Instagram specifically, um, decided to go full time and, you know, build our own thing. Hell yeah. That was with Tabu, right? Yeah, with Tabu. Yeah, yeah. That was great. That was fun, man. That was a lot of fun. Dude, you guys smashed that. Like, oh, I love those. I love the marketing and the video behind just the idea of bucket list adventures. And one thing that was really unique to your squad, the whole Michigan squad, is yeah. like you guys were so tight, so close. Yeah. And that's something I always envied about your group is that you just were like such homies like that stuck together through the thick and thin and then went on to continue to grow and build. You know, too many people fall into the trap of like, oh, this business got shut down. Oh, I'm never going to be successful again. Yeah. Like, you know, businesses come and go. That's life. That's you got to you gotta learn. You got to grow. You got to take what you can and just try try better. Can you tell us a little bit about what Watabu was all about and that experience and what you learned from it? Yeah, man. So Watabu was really cool. Um, myself, uh, Luke Hessler, Jamie Cheerio, Christian Jukes, and, you know, Peter Unger, a bunch of other guys. Shout out to all of them. You know, we started up this uh, travel-based business. We partnered with uh, Rob Sperry and Lance Conrad, big names in the industry, um, and uh, and started our own company. And it was called Watabu, which stood for worth talking about. Uh, and the whole idea was really just to center around the younger generation. And like you said, that bucket list lifestyle to really create, you know, moments, experiences, memories that people could remember for the rest of their lives, you know, and, and, and it was, it was the whole point was to, to create an experience so impactful in your life that it, it literally was worth talking about. And then you'd go share it on your social media and you talk about it in that moment. But then obviously down the road, I mean, even, you know, years later, we're still talking about some of those things. And so um, that was kind of the whole vision with it and the whole mission with it. And man, it, it attracted some amazing people, you know, people that to this day are some of my best friends because they joined my team in that business. And, uh, it was just such a blast. We were able to, you know, do a lot of traveling and do a lot of adventures, you know, and that was, what was so cool about it. It was like, if you're, you know, I know a lot of your listeners are in that space and you go to these conventions and, and they're cool. They're fun. You learn a lot, you know, whatever. Um, but like our style wasn't like, Hey, let's go sit in a room and listen to a bunch of speakers. It was, Hey, let's go rent a houseboat with a hundred people. Is that you guys are at 600 plus customers. Uh, you guys are crushing it. Uh, tell us about the experience with, with building the brand. How has kind of invigorate, how did it start and kind of where is it today and what have you learned from that? Yeah, man. So it started because I approached actually Luke and Jamie um, with the idea of starting a, originally like an Instagram company. Um, I, I, like I said, I've been on Instagram for pretty much the whole journey as well for like six years, you know, so I, and I've worked with a lot of names in the space and I've just worked with a lot of high level people in general just over the years. And so I, uh, you know, I met a few people on Instagram that had, you know, resources and I had resources and we were kind of collaborating and I brought that, that package to, to Jamie and Luke and was like, Hey guys, you know, this is, we could really make some money with this. And, you know, and, and there's, there's a lot of value here. You know, I really do believe that people would pay for this and receive a lot of value. And so, um, that's kind of how it started. We literally just, I brought that to them. We got, you know, did a meeting, we had a whiteboard and just kind of drew it all out, you know, and had figured out who was all going to be involved and what it looked like, you know, whatever. And, uh, and the whole goal with it, and really even to this day, was we really wanted to separate ourselves from other people in the space and the fact that we really truly wanted to provide the best results possible for higher level individuals, you know, and so our goal wasn't to go launch these packages that reached the masses and, you know, just run the numbers. It was how can we get in front of six, seven, eight figure earners and provide so much value that they're willing to pay us this dollar amount, you know, and so that's kind of what we did. It started just as Instagram. Um, and then, be, yeah, like you said, between us and our partners, you know, strategic partners we have in play, there's over 600 brands that we've been blessed enough to, you know, manage, um, many of which are, are in the network marketing profession. And, you know, almost all are, again, just, you know, high level individuals in various industries. Um, and then really the journey of it, um, it's evolved from, from just like an Instagram company. 
to now where we're really pushing out like digital marketing, right? So Instagram is an, is a, is a piece of that, but there's so much more to that space. Right. And so kind of where we're at right now is, um, and where we're going into the future, the near future is you have like the two sides, you know, Luke may have talked about this with you as well, but you have like the two ends of the company. Um, number one is, you know, small and medium sized businesses and just helping them like enhance their overall online footprint. Right. So taking a restaurant and helping them get reviews, rank up on Google, run Facebook ads, things like that. And then uh, the other side of the business, which is where I spend most of my time and most of my energy is the influencer creation process. Um, and that's really just taking somebody who, you know, in the real world actually has success as an influential individual. You know, if it's a network, if it's a network marketer, they're doing well, they have a massive organization, they're speaking on stages, things like that. And then helping them take that influence that they have in that little circle and expand it through a personal brand online. Um, and Instagram is kind of the starting point and the basics of, of that, but we've been able to expand and, you know, do so much more. And so that's kind of what it is, man. And, um, a few things I've learned from it is, you know, number one, um, you really do just get whatever you put your energy and focus into, right? Cause prior right. to that, you know, my focus was trying to convince broke college kids of how to pay me a few hundred bucks. Right. And then I switched my focus from that to how can I get in front of seven figure earners? And then it was like, boom, you know, fast forward a year later and I have hundreds of clients that are literally multimillionaires. Like, how does that even happen? It's because I put my focus there. Right. So that really opened up my eyes. Um, and then the second thing I would say is that, you know, just, I guess like the delayed gratification, right? We've heard that a lot, but like when you really are building your own thing, um, it just is a process, man. You know, it really is like, it was, it was a lot harder to go from zero to building a brand and a company and have clients and have a, you know, a, a payroll and, you know, a CFO and all this stuff. Um, where, you know, my background was in the network marketing profession where all that's kind of done for you. Right. And so that learning curve definitely was a challenge. And we realized, you know, that there's just a lot more moving parts and a lot more pieces at the beginning that you have to really run with. And then you start to see and reap the benefits down the road. And so, um, and I mean, that goes for everything, you know, but this was just, you know, a little bit different than anything I've ever done. So yeah, man, I mean, I could go on and on, but that's some of the things that, you know, we're doing and you know, where we're looking to go. It's cool because when you meet these influencers and you meet these people, you end up going down a rabbit hole you have no idea about. You know, when I got involved in Instagram, my number one goal literally was to learn how to make money by posting cool content through like motivational and inspirational quotes, right? So that's like what I got involved with. I got, you know, I started seeing people um, that were doing that and they were making money. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. I had this like epiphany where I realized that Instagram really is just like a digital billboard that you get to control. And, you know, it's just a billboard. And so what you put out there, people are going to see that. And if you learn how to market and curate that content the right way, and you have good offers and you build a brand, people will actually start giving you money for whatever it is you're selling. And so, um, you know, that's kind of how it all started. And, and at the very, very beginning, it literally started because I wanted to recruit people for my business, um, you know, but still same idea of a digital billboard, you know, and so, um, yeah, man, I mean, on it to be real, the success club was is a, an account that um, is just it, it's booming. And, and there's really two big things with it. You know, number one, it allows me to, you know, reach out obviously to a massive audience of people and share whatever kind of content I want. Um, and then number two, is it, it's leverage, right? It's credibility. And, and you know, I use that like if I'm if I want to connect with somebody really big, like an Ed Milet, for example, I'm going to shoot him a DM from that account, because when he sees it, he's like, wow, this guy's legit, you know, and so um, the, the credibility with it's absolutely insane, man. And I think people just, you know, there's like that, I know there's a lot of them out there, but there's like that top like 1% of those type of style of pages, um, that produce like the motivational, you know, content and, uh, and I was able to, you know, get into there. And so that's kind of what that account's all about a little bit more on the business side of things, you know, kind of a moneymaker, um, super fun to be a part of it and, you know, connect with people. And then the other account vision wall is actually where I originally started. Um, and that was the, the, same kind of style. But as of 2019, um, I, uh, I rebranded it to myself. So now it's my personal brand. It's my journey. You know, it's, it's, it's really the whole goal of it. It's kind of two things. Number one, I want to document my life for my own selfish sake, because I just think it's cool to like, look back and be like, Oh man, you know, yeah. when I did that trip, you know, and that and show my kids, you know, it's like, it's so cool. It's and dope. then the other side of it is, you know, I want to provide value, right? I don't claim to be like an expert or some guru or anything like that. I just want to provide value of things that I've learned. Um, and so I try to do that, you know, in the form of captions and stories and, you know, and things like that, man. So it's just really just sharing my journey and, uh, you know, kind of living this life the way that I want to live it and, and get other people to, you know, see that it's possible for them too. 
and you're so good at it. You're so good at documenting the journey. You know, that's Appreciate something that. that some people struggle with being able to show the authenticness of the journey. They're always trying to show the highlights, but they're not just showing the downs, you know, and right. that's really what most people are facing. The world's crazy. And if you're able to document that and show people that you are real, which is essentially how you got yourself to stand out throughout this whole journey is because yeah. you've been real, you've been authentic and people respond to that. And it's just incredible at what happens when you're consistent over a yep. long period of time <laughs> and you just keep it 300. So hell yeah, yeah bro. Absolutely, man. What about for the people that like say, you know, they're not using say your particular software, which I personally use and I love big proponent awesome. of everybody just That's throwing awesome. it out there. But what are your, you know, some things that you think that the average just starting an Instagram account, what are the say the three biggest mistakes that someone makes on Instagram and what are like, you know, I, I know that people talk about hashtags or, you know, are a typical good way to get discovered and um, using influencers to comment and stuff. But what do you think are like the three biggest mistakes that, or things you'd recommend to someone that they can just transform their own personal Instagram branding as of right now? Yeah, sure, man. Good question. So um, number one would be your bio. When I, when I, when I do trainings on Instagram to people, the, I always start with the bio because the bio is your first impression, right? When somebody comes to your account, they see your bio before they see your content. And so whatever they read there and see there is going to create that initial first impression, you know, and then I like to say they go into your content, your content closes the deal of getting a follower. And, uh, and so your bio needs to be it needs to be sexy. It needs to be structured a proper way, right? And so the, the example I always give is, you know, what's called a flow bio, and I won't dive too deep into it. But basically, it's just the idea of kind of having your bio set up in like a bullet point list formation, where it's like a, you know, you have like a buzzword or a key phrase that's like here, and then it's like, boom, 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 boom. And it just goes down. Because what happens is people come over. And then what they're looking for is, are you valuable enough? Are you worth the follow, right? That's, that's what we think, right? And so when someone comes over to your account and they see your bio, they need to know that, hey, you know, this, this guy or girl is legit. You know, they're, they're doing things that I want to do. They're traveling the world. They're making money. They're, you know, passionate about this or that. They're excited about this or that. They stand for this or that. Whatever it is that you're all about. And authentic, authentic um, being authentic plays a role in the entire thing. But, you know, putting out there what you're all about, what you've done, what you've accomplished to an extent. Um, but just setting it up properly so that it's kind of like people come over and their eyes literally just like flow down into your content. So that'd be the first thing is like optimizing your bio. Um, the second thing I would give people advice on in, in what most people do wrong is truly their content. You know, it's crazy, man. Like I'll get on the phone with, you know, some multimillionaire that's, you know, crushing it in business and, and they want help with their Instagram and I go to their account and it's like, you know, we just have this kind of like perception that like, oh, this person's, you know, killing it over here. So they must just be really good at absolutely everything. And I go to their Instagram account and I'm like, you're literally posting blurry pictures of your dog. Like this isn't going to work, you know? And, and so content is king when it comes to Instagram, right? It, I mean, obviously like the, that's what it is. It's an imagery first application, but so many people miss that. And when I say content is king, it kind of is like a twofold, like, Number one, your content actually does need to look good. It needs to be clean. It needs to be sharp. It needs to be vibrant. You don't have to live a filtered lifestyle, but make sure you're taking good photos. Like provide value, provide value, provide yes. value, and people will come to you. Attraction marketing, it's the new wave. It's crazy, like just looking at in the direct sales world, how things have changed. You know, for us personally, it's always in the past was always about doing home events, having tons of people over to your house. Now right. everything we do is online, you know, using systems right. where it's like feeding into Facebook groups, showing credibility, build it from your computer. So things are just constantly changing and evolving. And I just, the, I mean, those Instagram tips are just phenomenal right there. I mean, if people implement that right there like they're they're on a whole nother ball game because it's first impressions we live in a digital yeah. world and if you make a beautiful first impression then your whole shift is going to be so much easier to just break that in so uh bravo there those are going to be some phenomenal cliff notes for the good, blog good. post but good. uh you know a lot of times people run into situations where you know they really kind of in a sense hit a big low right and a lot of times when we hit those lows, it's the most scary times in our life, but it's also what breeds the new you. It, it creates these breakthrough moments. And you know, I'm always curious, like, you know, on your journey, I'm sure, you know, you've, you've been through ups and downs and like yeah. you have 
you've literally built a company, it gets shut down, you built another company, you, you know, that thing had to dis- be discontinued. And you're like, damn it, when's this gonna work? Yeah. You know, can you attest to like a certain moment that you think that you can look back on that was like uh, looking in the wall, like in the mirror, or the wall, I guess the wall is a little more sad, uh, <laughs> looking in the mirror and just being like, damn, man, like, I got to pull myself out of here. Can you attest to like a certain breakthrough moment that was happening in your life where you think you just like took things to a new level? Yeah. So honestly, many of them, man, I like to say that my story is, is very, very spot on, honestly, with the, the analogy of that Chinese bamboo tree that you have to water and cultivate and nothing happens for six years. And then in year seven, it blows up, you know, and, and that really is my story, like legit, you know, I went for four and a half to even five years now of just eating dirt, bro, like, you know, finding little wins and then getting destroyed, you know, and it's like, it just was, it, it, it really was a journey. You know, it's like when you talk about the highlights, like we've been doing, you know, obviously, it, it, you know, you, you use the word fairy tale in the beginning of the podcast. I started kind of laughing a little bit because it's like, it's so far from that, you know, like, yeah, sure. There's highlights that look like that, but it really isn't. That's not the truth. You know, I went through it a lot, man. I mean, just, just literally living just so broke paycheck to paycheck, you know, having to do all these little odd jobs, like things like that. And um, just never even knowing when, you know, I mean, for literally years, man, for years, it was like, legit okay it's the first of the month i gotta figure out a way to pay rent and pay for food for the rest of this month like that's what it was for years like it wasn't like a a two-month thing a three-month thing a six-month thing you know it's like you're especially in like the network marketing profession you see these people and it's like they tell these stories of how they went from nothing to a million dollars and you know in three months and like these crazy you know and they're like this average person but i'm sitting here like in year three like dude i'm still at that you know low level like what's going on And, um, and so, you know, for, in terms of like moments, there's a lot of them. Um, one that kind of came to mind was, I remember like, this wasn't even that long ago, dude, like two years ago, two and a half years ago. Um, I was at a point where, um, I needed money as always. And, uh, but I always refused to get a job. That was kind of my thing, you know, and I don't really recommend that, but I was so psychologically unemployable. It was ridiculous. Um, but I, uh, I remember we had like this mission trip that our group was going to go on and I really wanted to go. And, uh, and then I also had bills. Right. And then, um, there was something else. I can't remember what it was, but there was some other big payment. There was like two or three big payments that I had coming up. And I remember literally just like, it was like, okay, I always just figure this out. I always, you know, I always somehow figure out how to, how to get to that, you know, get past this next uh, phase and then get to the next month and start over. Right. I always kind of figured it out, but this was a time where it was like, it was cutting it close. I was coming down to the wire where I owed money for these certain things. And I remember just being like, I don't know what else to do. And I just called mom and I was like, mom, I need a loan. I need a grand. Like I need a loan. I will pay you back. Like I promise, you know, and like I just felt, and you know, she was super, my parents have always been super supportive. She gave me the money. I was able to do all the things and pay the bills and go on the trip. But it was like, I remember just thinking to myself, like, man, like I'm, you know, 24, whatever it was, 25 at that time, something like that. And it's like, I'm living on my own. I've been, you know, telling my friends and my parents for so long that I'm going to be this ultra successful entrepreneur. And here I am three, four years in and I'm asking my mom for a thousand dollars. I don't have a job, you know, in her head, she's probably like, why don't you just go get a job, Alex? You know, like, and so I remember just feeling so crappy, man. And so just like, when is this going to be over? You know, and I think that's something that so many people, like younger people, um, they have, they get to that point, you know, but to me, that's what makes or break uh, breaks a real entrepreneur, right? Because it's like when you get to that point where you're like, I literally have hit a wall so many times. I've, I've fallen and crumbled so many times. I don't even know what to do, but you keep going. That's where you have your breakthroughs, you know? And, and so for me, you know, that happened. And then I made the decision that I was never going to have to borrow money from absolutely anybody for the rest of my life. And I never have. I don't, you've never really had a lot of like credit card debt, anything like that. You know, I've never asked anyone for money for anything. Um, and, uh, and then you fast forward, you know, whatever it was year and a half, two years later. And now it's like, you know, I'm, I'm able to do a lot more and, you know, of course paid mom back and all that stuff. So that's the moment that kind of came to my mind, man. But yeah, the journey, dude, it's just, it's, it's been a journey for sure. It's been a giant journey. (laughs) Hell yeah, dude. You remind me of this experience I had in the 500 startups accelerator in San Francisco. So our startup Trueface, got into this accelerator program at the time was one of the top three accelerator programs in the world. It's basically like business school. The company goes in, they invest in your startup and then they, um, 
you know, for a percentage of equity. And then they basically go through like a three month training where you're just sitting there speaking to like super successful CEOs and, and mentors on how to scale and build your business. And that was actually the birthplace kind of of the podcast because I started doing these Facebook lives with all the other founders of these startups. Cause I was just so curious, like, why'd you start your company? Like, what are you into? Like, what, what's going on? And I remember, you know, someone mentioning, I think it was Gonzalo Fortes from Portugal, one of the most epic beards I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and he talked about like becoming obsessed with the grind that is mm. becoming an entrepreneur in the sense that like you could be this one of the brightest people, hardest working ever, but sometimes timing just isn't in your favor. And there is yeah. a complete reality that you might yeah. never make it as an entrepreneur. Like it, there's a true reality to it. And some people say, if you never give up, eventually you will. But there is a chance that you, your timing of your company could be wrong. Like you might've just missed the wave, things happen. But you gotta just love and be happy during the process of being your own boss, of being broke, of figuring it out. You gotta love it. You gotta yeah. enjoy it. Because if you don't, you'll quickly lose hope. You'll quickly lose that fire. So it's like, you gotta just love the grind of being in the startup and you have always been the definition of the person that's in that grind. You mm -hmm. love what you're doing. You see the future, you see the vision, straight up hashtag vision wall. Yeah. You know, you're <laughs> surrounding yourself with the success club. You're feeding yourself with personal development. You know, they always say like your personal development ends up equaling your paycheck once you like yeah. get to those levels. And you've prepared yourself to be able to converse with these six, seven, eight figure income earners because of all the training and failures you've had before. Like you now are there, you've achieved it. You've, you know, every level there's a new devil. You freaking rose up, man. You're, uh, you're doing it. And that's a, that's a major key for everyone listening. You know, ask yourself, do you deserve to be successful? Mm. You know, if you're in network marketing, do you deserve to be able to recruit a six or seven figure income earner? Are you able to train that person? If you're in startup, are you able to scale a team, lead people that their lives are going to depend on your paycheck coming? Are you ready for that? And if not, then get your ass ready for that if you want to yeah. do that. You know, start, start trying. Start trying. Go on Fiverr. Go on Upwork. Start hiring a virtual assistant. Do these things. And, and you know, I love these podcasts, man, because every time you can learn something, everybody is going to teach you something that you that you've never known before. So even if it's one major key and you've been dropping these golden nuggets, but one thing I'm really in, in, enticed to hear your thoughts and your philosophy on because um, the, the wise Alex Lombard is, is, you know, if you were to look back at your life, 24 years old, right? Maybe, maybe right then. Yeah. Ah, let's go. Let's back up. Let's go before Vima, before you even got into entrepreneurship and you had like, say, you know, a minute to three minutes to just like see yourself in a dream you know, you're like start hallucinating and all of a sudden you're like, yo, listen up, homie. This is me of the future, six years in the past. Like I got only like, you know, three minutes and, and you can tell yourself one, two or three things that would have just saved you a ton of time, money, maybe, you know, grief, patience, learning curves. And, and obviously people are like, you know, all my experiences are, I wouldn't change them for the world. They made me who I am today. Like bullshit. Like, nah, that's yeah. not playing. Like, what do you think you would probably tell your, your earlier self? Yeah, that's a good question, man. So one thing I've always, I've always said, and it's just, I always think it's so funny every time I say it because I just, I don't know if I would have listened to myself, to be honest, but the one thing I kind of mentioned it was the whole job thing. When I, I literally hit, and you'll know, like silver and Vima, okay? So not, nothing crazy. And I quit my job. And uh, I never went back. I never got a job ever again since then. Right. And so I used to be a very kind of like, I was always like super energetic and, and, you know, and again, like adventurous type person, but I definitely didn't allow a lot of people into my life. Like I would push people away. Like if I just met you, like I immediately always looked like had the worst impression of people until I really got to know you. And then I became your friend, which is such a stupid mindset. You know, like nowadays I like, I meet anybody and I'm like, I freaking love you. And then it's like, okay, if you do a bunch of bad things, like, okay, I don't necessarily like you anymore. But, um, you know, really just focusing on building the network, man, you know, my, we always hear it and your network is your net worth, but it really, it really is true. Like I heard that for so long and now I'm actually seeing that happen. It's like, wow, like some of these people that I get connected with and, and that I'm involved with have made me so much money. Like just from, just from being around them, their knowledge or their, you know, their introductions or even just working with them. Um, and so I would have told myself, focus on meeting new people, learning how to develop the skill sets of building relationships, because it is a skill 
mindset, you know, and, 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 you know, the, um, uh, what's the name of the book, the Dale Carnegie, I'm totally how to win friends, and influence people like that, that kind of stuff, you know, like how to actually learn how to win friends and influence them in a positive way, you know, and do those things at an early on age, I think would have just been just a game changer, man. So those are two things that I definitely would have told myself. Yeah. Building your influence. Number one. It's like when you first go to college, you get this blueprint where you're like, okay, you got to network, meet all your teachers and do all this stuff. But people don't, you know, attach that to like the world that they're yeah. trying to end, you know, like it's not about who, you know, it's, uh, it's not about what, you know, it's about who, you know, and people have told me that even when I was an economics major in college, they're like, you got to yeah. know someone to get a job. It's not about having a 4.0. You could be the mm -hmm. two five, but if you got the in, then you got the end. So it's like, spend more time networking and, you know, keep that job. Those are phenomenal, phenomenal things. And this is kind of like the, the trail mark of, of, of our show. And, and really, you know, something that I, I love listening to because it's always like, you know, escaping that comfort zone. And what is that quote by Joseph Campbell? Something about oh, yeah. the cave, the cave you fear to enter, enter yeah. all the treasures that you seek. Hell yeah. yeah. Shout out to that quote. But yeah, it's so like, good. you know, jumping into that, like that, that concept of what would you say to the person that right now maybe has this brilliant idea of what they want to do with their life? Maybe it's uh, starting their own business, getting into direct sales, uh, jumping into say conservationism or, or conser I don't even know if that's a word. And then being able to basically live a life that they dream of, but there's something holding them back. They currently have a super stable job. They're making great money. They have a great things going on, but they don't feel like they're making moves. They don't feel like they're learning new things. They feel like they're just getting a paycheck, their lifestyle equates their paycheck, and they still don't really feel like they have so much money because they're just blah, 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 monotonous. Or the person that is just like looking to build a bigger future. Maybe they're working a job they don't like. Maybe they're doing something that they wish they, they could achieve more. But there's something holding them back. Maybe it's time. Maybe it's money. Maybe it's fear. What would you say to that person that's right on the cusp of making a big move and taking that first step? Yeah, man, dude, I would say, I would say, here's, the, here's just the reality of it. It's like, life really is just so short. You know, like I, I've been, I've been in this, uh, if you know who Jesse Itzler is, I've been in his program lately, he's a super cool entrepreneur. But one thing he always talks about is how he's like, you know, I'm 50 years old. And yesterday I was 25. You know, and it's like, and, and it's just like, it's so powerful, man. Like you, you are limited, like your time is limited. And if you're not actually doing the things that you want to do life by design, you're literally quite literally wasting your life. And it's just like, when you really let that sink in, I think it'll, it'll push people to take action. Um, and at the end of the day, you know, for your specific question, all it really is, is, is they're just, they're not taking action, right? I mean, that's what it is. They're not, they're not jumping into what it is that they want to do because of some sort of fear, I always just take the action and I step into it. I step into the fear. Um, and every single time, man, every single time I crush it, you know, it may not go perfect, but the end result I get, it, I attain, you know, whether it's a, you know, closing a deal, getting a client, you know, crushing a speech, whatever it is. Um, and it just happens and, and, and it never goes away. That's what's crazy. It's like, I've done it so many times, but it never goes away. Like every time I walk out in front of a group of people, I have that fear but then I just walk out and it goes away, you know? And so that's what I would say, man, you know, there's kind of a lot in there, but really the, the, what I'm getting to is train yourself. And the only way you can do this is by just taking action, but train yourself to step into the fear whenever you feel that resistance. And I'm telling you, you do that over and over and over again, and you'll start becoming comfortable um, doing it. Like now when it happens to me, I'm like, I get like excited. I'm like, I feel so scared, but I'm excited because every time this happens and I do it anyways, it's a great result. So I'm just going to do it. Right. And then boom, I step out into the fear. So that's what I would say. Nice, man. Step into fear, you know, <laughs> make things happen. Cesar Rodriguez, one of our guests, he has this band, he calls it the B10XB fan. And every time you're like, you're, you're scared, you go like that and you inflict pain into yourself and you're like, ah, I got to go do it. I got to go talk to that girl. I got to go make that <laughs> sale. I got to go make these moves. And do your move, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, and whatever <laughs> it is that gets you to go and send it, like you just got to send it. You just got to make yeah. that move. And you're a great example. You got to throw those Hail Marys, people. Throw those Hail Marys. But at the same Take time, the you're throwing, throwing the short pass plays and throw the running plays. But make sure you're throwing the Hail Marys. You never know who's going to bite on an idea. You never know what type of clients you can work with. And the more I, I, I get into startup life and business, I find out that 
some of the most successful companies in the world, you assume that they have like the greatest staff, the greatest engineers and people, but then you kind of get into it and you're like, wait, wait, no, like some of these people, like I can, I can go to bat with these people. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So it's like experience is everything. So, I mean, Alex, it's been real, man. I appreciate you so yeah. much. How can people follow the journey of Alex Lombard? Where would you point them to? Yeah, I would just go to my Instagram, man, you know, at vision wall, one word vision wall. Um, and on there, you can, uh, you can follow me and see my journey. You can connect with me, shoot me a DM. You can email me You can go to my website that's listed on there as well to get more info on how to you know, work with me. Um, but yeah, man, just, just go to my Instagram account. Everything I do is interconnected to that Instagram account. So just go there and, uh, you know, let's get connected. All right, man. It's been real. We appreciate you so much for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. This was a blast. Hasta luego. See ya. Thank you for listening to another episode of Len Jones Party of Two. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review and subscribe to stay up to date on our new episodes. And remember, hope is not a strategy. Keep making moves. Till next time. Peace.